All right, we're going to talk about a little function, operations, and composition. This section, this part of it at least, should be somewhat of a review for you, but I want to go over it just to make sure. So if I'm going to talk about function, operation, and composition, if I have f plus g of x, so it's just using function notation, and remember our four operations are add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So if I have the notation of f plus g of x, all you're simply doing is taking f of x plus g of x. That's it. So if you have then f minus g of x, you're just going to take your two functions and do what? Yep, subtract them. And if you have f with g touchy-touchy, what operation are you doing whenever your two things are touchy-touchy? Multiplication. So f of x times g of x. Excellent. If you have f over g of x, what operation is that? Yep, division, last but certainly not least, right? Now, anytime you have division, what's the deal with the denominator? Can't equal zero. Good. Remember, that's one of our big fat no-nos whenever it comes to the denominator. So, this works as long as g of x does not equal zero. Good. Okay, so for our first example, you have these two functions. f of x is equal to x squared plus 1, and g of x is equal to 3x plus 5. So, notice my notation here. This is f plus g of 1. So this 1 is the x value that you're plugging in. So you're going to take your f of 1 plus your g of 1, which means you'll take your f of x function, plugging the 1 in, add that to your g of x function, also plugging the 1 in. So it looks a little something like this. You have 1 squared plus 1, that's your f of x function, plus if you do your g of x function, that's 3 times 1 plus 5. So keep in mind this first part is your f of x function, the second part is your g of x function. So they're just numbers, so do your work. 1 squared is 1 plus 1 plus 3 plus 5. So your f plus g of 1 is now equal to 10. So that is your final answer. Whenever you are adding your f of x and g of x and you plug a 1 into that, you get 10. Cool, let's do more. Okay, we're going to keep using the same two functions and we're going to do a couple more examples of these. So let's look at this first one, f minus g of negative 3. So when you go to plug this in, you are going to take negative 3 squared, because that's your f of x function, plus 1, minus 3 times negative 3 plus 5. Now, why am I putting parentheses around each one of those functions? Yeah, if you're looking at this, this whole thing is f of x. This whole thing is g of x. Because of this minus sign, anytime you have that minus, you're going to have to distribute that minus to the second set. So make sure you pay attention to that. Okay, so let's keep going. So negative 3 squared is a positive 9 plus 1 minus negative 3 times positive 3 is a negative 9 plus 5. Keep going. So I have 10 minus a negative 4. Now notice how that makes a difference because at this point we're going to add the opposite. So whenever I have my problem, f minus g of negative 3 actually equals 14. Very cool. Okay, let's take a look at here. Now this one we know is multiply, so do that. Basically, we're just plugging in these values and doing the operation it says. So it's not too bad. You guys got this. We end up with 5 squared plus 1 times 3 times 5 plus 5. So if my 5 squared, that's going to give me 25 plus 1 and then 15 plus 5, 
So you get 26 times 20. And at first I thought this was going to be kind of a nightmare, but really 26 times 20, that's not too shabby. So you end up with 520. So F times G of 5 is what gets you 520. Nice. Let's do a division and round this thing off. Now notice for this one, I'm taking F divided by G of 0. Now, remember with a 0 in the denominator, we can't do that. However, if I have the value of 0, look what happens whenever I'm plugging this in. I get 0 squared plus 1 over 3 times 0 plus 5. Does that make a 0 in the denominator? No. You end up with 1 fifth. Just because you're plugging in a value of 0 does not make a 0 in the denominator. You know, just for fun, what would make this value, the 3x plus 5, undefined if a 0 was in the denominator? Yep, you set that equal to 0, subtract your 5, divide by 3, and that is what makes it undefined. However, that's not really what we're looking at on this one, but I wanted to point out 5 third, negative 5 thirds is different than plugging in a 0. Our answer for this problem is your 1 fifth. Pretty sweet, right? Cool. Instead of just plugging in numbers, you can also plug in variables. So let's see what's going on with that. 